If I told you right now to come up with a fishing minigame for my goblin game, what does your mind immediately go to? Mine initially jumped to the thing we've seen a thousand times. You plop your line in the water, wait for the little bob thing to dip under the surface, and smash the A button like your life depends on it. Then you've caught your fish. It's certainly fun for a bit, but after your 20th fish it gets a little boring. I think I've come up with something a bit more interesting, but I'll let you guys be the judges. But before that, why even bother adding one? In some games it feels a bit strange that you can fish, and I don't want it to feel like I'm just checking a box. So I think they serve two main purposes. First. Take a look at something like Hades. In Hades, you're rampaging from floor to floor killing enemies in an action-fueled frenzy, but for some reason you can completely stop and linger around to catch some fishies. It feels a little out of place and totally shifts the vibes. It's like if you were playing Doom and decided to sit and birdwatch for two minutes between killing demons. The intensity leaves and you're just kinda left with your thoughts, as terrifying as that is. You're forced to take a minute to admire your surroundings, and I think that's the key. It gives you a little breath of fresh air where you can just vibe and step back from the intensity of gameplay. The fishing itself may not be super fun, but you still enjoy the break, looking at the scenery you were rushing by earlier. And besides being a nice vibe check, fishing can be pivotal to the gameplay loop. It's pretty much an afterthought in something like Twilight Princess, but it's a key source of income in Stardew Valley. I think out of the two, our game leans more towards something Stardew Valley-esque, and since I plan on fishing being a strong source of income early on, I think it'll fit perfectly in this game. So now we just need to decide what the minigame will be. Now I know many of you are new, but when I first started making this goblin game, it was rhythm-based. Your movement used to be tied to the grid, so I had a fishing minigame that was kind of like Dance Dance Revolution, to fit the theme of being kind of rhythmy. You'd have to hit the arrow keys on your keyboard in time to jerk your rod correctly and catch a fish. I think this was alright for the old game concept, but now that we've moved on to something more Terraria and Stardew-esque, I don't think it'll quite work. Some of you will hate me for this, and some of you are probably glad, but that old concept is going out the window. Sorry DDR, maybe I can squeeze you into the game somewhere else as an easter egg of sorts, but for now I think I have to come up with something new. And I think I've got something solid, but before I dive into that idea, we've got a quick word from our wonderful sponsor for today's video, Southern New Hampshire University. Now sometimes college can be painful. If you want to save money and commute like I did, you have to drive all the way over in rush hour traffic, fail to find a parking spot that you paid $1,000 for, walk all the way to class, and then sit there for 50 minutes and listen to something that could have been explained over the internet. SNHU avoids all this nonsense by being completely online. You don't have to leave your precious goblin nest, and it's non-profit so it's all pretty affordable compared to other places. I bet you could get an entire degree without ever putting any clothes on. What a time to be alive. They have all sorts of degrees, but I imagine most viewers here will be interested in computer science or game development. They've got classes that cover programming, physics, graphics and interface design, basically everything you would need for a legitimate degree. The classes are also taught by industry professionals, so you'll get some wonderful connections to people in the industry who may be useful to you later on. All of my engineering jobs I've gotten were through connections at school, so I personally have found networking to be actually very valuable. But yeah, if this sounds interesting at all, there's a link in my description below, so feel free to check that out. Now back to fishing. My first thought was that fishing poles are overdone, especially for goblins. I can't imagine a goblin having the patience for that. I think instead it would be fun if they had little spears that they throw into the water, Tom Hanks style. I drew up some sample art for a top-down pool of water where you can see the little fish silhouettes and got to work coating it all. It took a few days, but I ended up with this. You can select your spear in your inventory, walk up to the water, and click to start fishing. The pool pops up and you can toss your spear to try to hit the fish. There's a bit of a delay between when you click and when it lands, so you have to try to lead your shot. These lily pads also bounce around and occasionally block your hits. Each fish can have different swim patterns. Some go in a sinusoidal wave, some go straight, some zigzag, and some just kind of move randomly. They can also have different sizes and speeds, so more rare fish can be very fast and very small. Then different spears can have different landing delays, so the more expensive ones can be faster and easier to use, while the cheaper ones are slower and it's harder to hit. Overall, it's kinda stupid, it's just a dumb little simple game, but I think it accomplishes the goal of being kinda passively interesting enough for a leisurely activity. I need to make it look a little more fancy too, the water's very plain and could use some shader pizzazz, but I think it conveys the idea well enough. I don't know of any games that do something exactly like this, but let me know if I'm ripping someone off without knowing it. I've got a Discord where you can come chat about the game if you're interested, and of course while I'm shilling for interaction, liking or commenting goes a long way to make the YouTube algorithm finally approve of me like my parents never did. Now fishing isn't the only thing I've added by far. I also went ahead and implemented farming. You can use your hoe to till some soil, plop down some seeds, and over time they'll grow. Eventually you'll be able to harvest them, some crops will continue to yield, and some go away once you pluck them. Pretty standard farming stuff. One big question though is, should we force the player to water the crops? Some games do, some games don't. Right now, the plan for the gameplay loop is to be something like this. You'll spend some time at home building houses for the new NBC arrivals, crafting stuff for your next journey, and prepping for things that may pay off in the future, like crops or livestock. You then go out and explore in search of the resources you need, likely encountering plenty of new stuff and dangerous enemies, until you eventually come back with full pockets, restarting the loop eager to overcome those new dangers you saw and use your new resources. Watering doesn't seem super essential here. In something like Stardew Valley, the whole game is built around how much you can do in a day. 
Since watering takes up time and energy from your energy bar, it's really satisfying to eventually get sprinklers that free you up to do other things. With our game though, I fear it would just discourage long journeys, since you'd feel like you always had to come back to water each day. The player would feel a constant tug of responsibility that kept them from enjoying the freedom of exploration, which is a huge part of this game. So for now, I'll leave it out, but we'll see how it goes during playtesting. Next up, we added livestock. This was insanely complicated, and I tried to keep it interesting. First, I took my old spider art from the first version of the game and animated it in six directions instead of four. I still like the idea of goblins keeping spiders and rats and stuff as livestock, so we'll keep going with that. I made an adult male spider, adult female, baby male, and baby female. I then made it so you can spawn one by laying down an egg and giving it a name. It'll then wander around its spawn point until you place a trough. You can click on the trough to assign the creature and add in some food for them to eat. The food also shows up when you close the menu so you can see if it's empty without clicking on it. Over time, once they're adults, they'll drop produce in the trough and you can harvest it, like this spider silk. I then wanted to add little beds for them to sleep on, so they could, uh, do wholesome things. You can place a bed, and if you assign an adult male and female to it, there's a chance eggs will appear that you can steal in the night. Now I got a little fancy here and made it so the animals have subspecies, and if you have two different subspecies of spiders breed, there are different chances of the child being different things. So if you breed two regular spiders, there's a 1% chance of a, uh, I don't know, golden spider. But if you breed a golden spider with a regular one, that jumps up to 20%. And if you have two golden spiders, it's up to like 80 or something. The idea is that the player will have to selectively breed for the type of spiders they want. Unfortunately, I also made it so you can slaughter the spiders for some meat. I thought it was especially cruel when this poor little guy wouldn't fight back and seem to accept his fate. But luckily, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. It also always takes 4 hits to kill them no matter how strong your weapon is, so you'll never do it on accident. So overall, the system seems to work pretty well. The spiders will alternate between their troughs and their beds, it's fun to watch them wander around. You can also give them pets to increase your friendship with them, which makes them drop better stuff. They do also defend themselves if an enemy approaches too, and this all works over multiplayer as well, so this was a huge undertaking. I just covered all that in a few minutes, but it really took a long time, and I don't want you to underestimate how much code that took. Fishing was a walk in the park compared to this, but I'm happy with how it looks. The next addition to the game is simple, I added armor. You can go into your inventory, drag your armor onto these slots, and it'll cover your body. Under the hood, it's just an overlay that gets placed over the player, super simple. And with that, we're not done yet. I added in containers as well. You can open them to view the contents, and they'll save once you close it. It also reflects over multiplayer. If one player opens the chest, the other won't be able to access it until they're done. When they do, the items will all be there. After wrapping that up, I added in a little messaging system in the corner, so the player can get notified when stuff happens. Very similar to Terraria. It'll say things like, this person started a boss fight, or you can't place trees on water, stuff like that. And then lastly, I added in these damage numbers so you can clearly see when damage is dealt. Now with that everyone, we reached the end of our changes. By the next video, I hope to have added traps, consumables, pollution, ability trees, and character customization. We'll see how much I can finish. But if you like what you see so far and want to help support the channel, all you have to do is click the like button, and maybe subscribe or leave a comment to help boost the algorithm in my favor to help spread the word. I have it set so every comment pops up on my phone. I love reading every single one, so make sure to give my pants a little vibration and brighten up my day. You can let me know how much you like or hate the changes, I'm always open to criticism. I also have a Discord where we chat about the game, and you can wishlist on the uh, heavily outdated Steam page to get notified when the game releases, if it seems like something you'd like. And with that everyone, I want to thank you all for coming. Views have been kind of popping off lately, and it's been so fun to see all the interaction and chat with you guys. I'm really excited about this project, and I'm glad you're coming along for the ride. So uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you all next time. Hello everyone, the time has come to shout out our eternally gracious patrons. I'd like to give a super special shout out to our Goblin Deity patrons for May of 2023, namely Zachary Nice, Zach Fox, Sarah, Krakenfall, Brett Hudson, Jackson Singleton, Tarodev, aka Matthew Spencer, Bertiti, Joseph Scobby, Megan Palmer, Random8408, Snout, and Temp. You're all amazing and I appreciate all of the support.